so this is Sleepwalker. <clears throat> it's a patch that I developed based on the effects chain that's at the end of my generative patch, the Synambulist, which I just sort of really fell in love with. <clears throat> I had to make some modifications, but also some expansions to adapt it to <clears throat> an effects patch. But basically it's made up of three different blocks. The first block is an input looper section, which are these blue and purple buttons here, uh, or grid blocks. Then there's a delay section, a dual stereo delay section based on the Soma Cosmos. Uh, and finally, there's a reverb and a mixer, you know, um, for adding ambience and sort of pulling everything together. And uh, just as my sound source today, I wanted to use uh, the Bora drone synth from Decade Bridge. I wanted to give Steve a shout out. Seems like a nice guy. He's doing really good stuff. He's a small builder in the United Kingdom. Um, but you can use anything with this guitar, voice, kazoo, you know. Um, I just thought it'd be something a little different than, than some of my other demos. So I'm going to go through the blocks a little bit. So there are four loopers at the input section. And I'll point out real quickly that we can turn the loopers off, or rather we can not send signal to them is a better way of putting it as well as the dry signal. So if we wanted to play over this without recording something into the loop, uh, we could do that. And these two stomp switches, if you see here, correspond. Uh, you can also press these buttons. So if you're using this with Zebu, with Euro Bureau, you don't need the stomp switches uh, for anything except for one of these which maybe I'll add a, a push button for in a, a minute before I release this. Um, this third stomp switch can be used to erase the contents of the loop as long as it's held down um, which is useful sometimes things get busy or you just want to you know clear clear things out. Um, there's also a low pass filter at the end of the looper section, which allows you to, you know, if you're pitching things up and you want to make them maybe a little bit less um, bird screechy, you can apply the filter, sort of cut off some of the high end. Uh, you have control over pitch for loopers one and two. They work as a pair based on this tap tempo but they don't exactly follow the tap tempo. They're a little randomized and they're set up in a read record uh, pair. So one's always recording and one's always playing back. Uh, but the tap tempo here, it also accepts MIDI clock, controls some basic timing stuff for all of the loopers. The uh, Density control affects the loopers three and four. They're probabilistically determined and they only play once. Um, so you can set a high or a low density if you want them to be more or less common. Uh, and there's a pitch for looper three. Looper four, I decided to leave as it is in the original patch, which is it randomly selects between playing back at minus one octave, minus a fifth, and at the pitch that, that the incoming signal has. So, you should be able to hear some pitch up effects when this makes its way into the... Right? So it helps add to the sort of complexity of the signal. Uh, just erase that for a second. 
and because things are set to a really long amount. There we go. We can set the levels for these two input sections too. There's a level for the direct in as well as a level for the, the loopers for the audio coming into that uh, recording paradigm. Um, then there's these temporality and atemporality controls. The cosmos is fixed, right? It, it gives you certain uh, times for the loopers, for the delay lines, and certain offsets for them. Uh, I decided to make that something you could set up on your own. Um, so the delay lines go up to 16 seconds and the A temporality control defines the percentage of the, the temporality control that is used for the second uh, delay line. So whatever the first delay line is set to by this control, this will be 85.84% as long as that. Uh, but you can set it up to different things. You know, you could set it up to a really like short amount. Um, we're hearing some. So it just gives you a little bit more leeway to experiment with those ratios and, and that sort of thing. Um, we have our feedback control, which controls, you know, how persistent those delay line loops are. Uh, the blur determines how much they feed back into one another, cross feedback. So information from one will be sent to the output. The output of one will be set to the input of the other and vice versa. Uh, and you can get some interesting things by playing around with that. When blur is set to 100%, you get this sort of left, center, right uh, panning effect with the delay lines, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, at 50%, they sort of form a, a mash, right? All the content gets sort of progressively spread across all the delay lines. I should add that there's this slew amount. If you increase the slew amount, when you change the delay line lengths, you get more um, pitch bend sort of effects. Let me see. It's not very loud right now. Um, So that's really fun to play with when you're maybe like breaking down a, a sort of soundscape that you've built up. You can manipulate the delay lines. Um, drift is a, a sort of a randomized pat, a panning element. These are drawn pretty much from the Soma Cosmos itself. I added this control called Smear. Um, and Smear, what it does is it adds a modulation effect, but it's not really like a chorus or vibrato. It's more um, a way of just making the, the delay content a little bit less fixed, which will help with keeping, with smearing out the contents and keeping certain frequencies from building up. So it's a pretty subtle effect, um, but if you remove it, you probably can hear it over time. If you're going to spend a lot of time messing around with this patch, mess around with that, see what you think. Um, and then the final section is the the erase section. This is the part that I don't have a push button for, but I may add that. Um, so right now the, the left, the right stomp switch erases content. Let me add some content. Increase the feedback.
so I can determine the depth that I want to erase. So maybe I don't want to just remove everything in the buffer. I just want to make it quieter while I add something on top, let's say. Or I can use that sort of to just add sort of rhythmic lacunas into my, you know, like looping delay lines. Uh, and there's a slew amount that determines how quickly that stomp switch responds. And you'll see uh, this delay level, I didn't know quite what to describe it as. It's, it really is sort of just giving you a visual feedback of what's happening with that. And then there's also this suppress control, which is based on an envelope follower at the input, which does the same thing, but sort of automated. Um, and what it'll do is suppress the feedback of the, the contents as they cycle through the delay lines so that new material can go over top of old material. And then finally, there's just a, a plate reverb, decay, and mix. But the combination of these three sections, I think, is really great for, for creating like pretty vast soundscapes out of minimal uh, content. And then, you know, you can sort of get something going and mute the inputs and play over top of it, or you could only add looped uh, pitched stuff at that point or only dry signal you know you have some options with how to approach this sort of performatively um, but it was just sort of a, a concoction I came up with for that generative patch that I really sort of fell in love with and wanted to be able to use for other things um, so that is sleepwalker which again is an adaptation of the effects section from my generative patch, uh, The Somnambulist. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, have a good day.